So calculating news data deviation to trade the unexpected. Now, conventional news trading is not an edge. And what I mean by um, conventional news trading is if you're buying when there's positive news and selling when there's negative news, that is not an edge. And that's that's what I would call conventional news trading. Um, in case you don't know, trading is a zero sum game. Forex trading is definitely a zero sum game. For someone to win, someone else has to lose. And if the news comes out positive and everybody's buying, you know, maybe 20 years ago that may have worked and that's how traders made their money. But um, in today's markets, that is just not a trading edge. And um, I'm going to show you how to uh, have a trading edge by calculating uh, news data deviation. All right. And um, again, just a reminder not to trade every news uh, data release or high impact news data release. What we want to do is gauge sentiment, right, and potential forecasts from big publications, um, and also obviously establish the theme around um, what the market is uh, potentially focused on. So, um, when you're doing a Google search, right, there is a news tab. So, when you first log on to Google, um, you probably start off with all. Do a search on England Bank of England interest rate hike, right? And it normally starts off on all. What you want to do is go to the news tab, and then if you go to tools, and then you can have it will basically come up with um, uh, all of the uh, the news regarding obviously the search um, and the tools. You can sort by all the news recent, the most within the past hour, twenty four hours, etc. Right, and sort by relevance. But the point in this exercise is to gauge a little bit of sentiment as to what is happening now. Doing an interest, uh, a search on whether the Bank of England are going to hike interest rates, you can see the headlines, right? So the headlines um, would be something like uh, Bank of England policymakers split on rate hike. You've got Bank of England expected, and this is backed by City AM. Uh, Bank of England expected to keep path clear for May rate raise. And then you've got Bank of England holds um, holds rates, but split vote set the stage for May. And it sounds, looks like it's an uh, interest rate hike. And again, uh, bank votes, it hints at interest rate rise, right? So you're getting some, um, some headlines from big... Um, publications like the Guardian, Telegraph, City AM, CNBC, BBC News, right, that there is a potential interest rate hike on the way, right? We're in March talking and they're talking about May. So with that being said, we've established that there could potentially be a interest rate hike. Now what we want to do is um really establish deviation. Now, we're not going to do deviation on an interest rate hike, but what we are going to calculate is just news deviation on a uh, potentially any news event. And you can use this on any news event. Um, but again, if you want to increase your chances of a really good trade um, and for the news to really react when you're trading the news, you want to establish a theme. This is just for as an example of why you should be of how to really search, um, you know, sentiment and theme and themes on um, using Google. So let's get into how to calculate deviation to trade the unexpected. So before we get into uh, calculating deviation, First of all, we need to understand what is deviation. So um, deviation as described, um, the definition is the amount by which a single measurement differs from a fixed value such as the mean, right? So the mean or the average, right? Now, if you don't understand that, the best way to kind of um, uh, uh, describe it is to really just visualize it, right? So the amount by which a single measurement differs from a fixed value, such as the mean. So if we go to the uh, Trading Economics website, we have um, 
the uh, non-farm payrolls, and this is on, under forecast, right? And this average would be considered the mean, right? This this line, this dotted line, right? Now the deviation would be, even though the description says a single measurement, what we're looking for is a two measurements, a high and a low, right? So the uh, the deviation really is just the deviation from the mean. So how high and how low, right, away from the mean, right, is what we would describe as deviation, right? So it's kind of like Bollinger Bands, if you know what Bollinger Bands are, where you have, uh, you can calculate one standard deviation, two standard deviations, etc. right? But what we need to calculate first is, is we need to, find an average and then what we're going to do is define the deviation um, high and the deviation low right um, and this basically um, will allow us to really trade news events um, where what we're trying to do really is we're trying to get uh, trade the news when it comes out and the news data um, that has the most impact. So the closer to the deviation we are, and if, especially if it goes past deviation, the higher the impact or the more the impact um, it should have as far as the news, right, on the market, right? Because if we're, if, if we're forecasting, right, and this is the average, and then prices, let's say, for example, non-farm payrolls comes out and it's around the average, even though it might be slightly positive or slightly negative, it's still around the average. What we're looking for is for really price to be to when it you know to, in order to trade the news and to have a really um, you know for for the market to really kind of be maybe potentially wrong footed is for there to be a forecast of the news right and it might stay within the average, but then the actual date of release comes out and it's either way above the deviation or way below us, our standard average, right? And that gives us a great trading opportunity. And it's not just non-farm payrolls. This uh, method can be used for um, pretty much any um, news event. So first of all, what we need to do is just calculate the average. So the average figure we're trying to calculate is really the average difference between the forecasted data, past forecasted data, and actual data, right? And uh, from there, once we can calculate the average difference between forecasted data and actual data, we can then um, calculate our deviation high and our deviation low. So. Let's get into calculating the uh, the average difference between the forecasted data and the actual data. So first we need to go to our forecasted number. And for this example, we're still gonna continue on with um, the example of the non-farm employment change. And our forecasted number is 190K. Now, um, we can use a news aggreg aggregate site, any news aggregate, aggregate site, sorry, um, is useful as long as it has accurate data. Forex Factory is the one I'm using for this example, right? Um, so the next thing we wanna do is go to detail if you're using uh, Forex Factory. And if you click on the folder, it will give you the history. I've obviously unpacked this already. I've pressed on it already, but um, if you do click on the, for example, the one above, average hourly earnings, you can click on this, it will give you the history, right? But I've already done it for the uh, non-farm employment change. Now, the third thing we need to do is to calculate the difference between the actual data results and the past forecasted data for each month for the past, you know, nine to 12 months, right? And a negative or positive figure is not relevant. So what I mean by that is, and I've done this already on the left-hand side, is we're trying to calculate the difference between, for each month, for the past nine months, the difference between the actual in March and the forecasted in March. And the difference between the actual and the forecasted was 108K. The difference between uh, 200K and 181K was 19K in February, and so on and so forth, right? So just the difference between the actual and the forecasted. 
So you do that for, I did that for nine months. And then what we do is we're gonna add together each of these obtain, of, of these obtained figures and divide the total number to get the average difference figure, right? So we're adding all of these numbers for the past nine months, and then we're gonna divide it by the number of months, and then we get our 51K. So that's the average difference figure, right? Between what has been forecasted and what has actually come out. Now, by calculating that, this allows us to um, create our deviation high and low, right? Because what the forecasts are telling us is what the economists, how how wrong or right as an average, the uh, the economists are um, regarding and the, and the data crunches are um, around, um, you know, when they actually forecast and when they're actually forecasting the news, right? So at an extreme end, right? They will be 51K either wrong, either to the upside or to the downside. And that's how we get our deviation. So our 51K, right? Um, so let's go back, sorry. So go back to the current forecasted news event, which is 190K. Um, and add the, the average difference figure of 51K to the current forecasted data to get the deviation high. And then subtract the average difference figure from the current forecasted news release to get the deviation low. So again, this is what we've just done. If we look at it visually, so we've got our news release of 190K. We've calculated 51K to be the average difference figure over the past nine months, right? So this is where economists tend to be uh, uh, right or wrong or the deviation between the numbers um, and what is forecasted and what is actually uh, the data that's actually come out, right? So at the extreme end, if we add 51K, we get 241. And that's our deviation high. And at a low end, we've got 139K, right? And that's our deviation low. Now, this is what we're basically looking for is for the news to come out and be somewhere around the deviation high or the deviation low. Now, the closer to the high or the low, or if it goes beyond, especially if it goes beyond the, the high and the low, what we're anticipating really is, uh, is, is, the, is the market to react, right? Is the, really the market to, um, to have more of an impact, the closer it is and further beyond it goes the deviation high or low, because what is being factored in, if I get my tool again, right? If we get our high, our low, and this is our average, what is being factored in is the previous number. And this is, if, if, if we have, let's say for example, the chart, this is supposed to be negative and prices have been trending down. This is a buy the rumor, sell the fact, potentially, um, or the, the market is factoring in and pricing in this 190k right or an average of thereabouts right they're factored in maybe 10k 20k um you know plus or minus now obviously our deviation over the past nine to 12 months or nine months in this case is 51k right so if the figures that are released are anywhere close to this um number or even especially beyond, this is what we really want to see is if it's beyond that number or if it's beyond the higher, the low deviation, that should have an, a, a much bigger increase in the movement, right? Because these economists that do the forecasts and these data crunchers that do the forecasts, 
um, are have been you know um, basically wrong not only wrong footed but you know severely wrong footed right from the average so this is what we're uh, we're doing and this is how really you should look to trade every news event and this is one of the reasons why when a data release comes out positive let's say for example that came out at you know 195 right yes on forex factory you will see you know a, a green you know figure or red figure right and then people kind of automatically come out and say they press buy or they press sell yeah and what happens is is the market is you know is already factored in the fact that you know maybe 5k isn't outside of you know the normal right not number these, these numbers aren't perfect but we know that if it's outside of or even close to 51k for example in this example then we know that we potentially have a, uh, a, a higher chance or the impact of that number is more of the extreme end right and there should be some market movement right so this gets you into a trade but it also keeps you potentially keeps you out of trades as well if you have any uh, questions just email me at info at trading 180.com